Hi everyone, so in this video we are going to look at another game from FIDE Online Chess Olympia 2020 and we are talking about semi-finals in this video. So we all know that in semi-finals India was fighting against Team Poland and in round 1 India was badly defeated by Team Poland by uh, with, with a score of 4 and 2 and uh, all the top boards uh, were either a draw or a loss for Team India and Team India gave an amazing comeback in round 2. Uh, all the top boards including Vidit, Anand, Harika and Hampi brought win for Team India and India won with 4.5, 1.5 in round 2 going straight to Armageddon where Hampi Koneru played an amazing game against Monika Sochko from Poland and uh, it was a very good calm and composed game by Hampi and uh, she brought victory to team India in the Armageddon winning the winning the uh, winning the round winning the semi-finals uh, going straight to the finals so we are not going to look at that game from Armageddon rather we are going to look at uh, the game from round two because I thought that yeah obviously the game from the Armageddon was really interesting but uh, I hope that many of you have uh, seen, have watched that video, that game already in various uh, on various channels. So I have decided to come up with the game from round two. So without further delay, let us dive into this game. Monika Sochko from Team Poland is playing with the white pieces, and Hampi Koneru from Team India is playing with the black pieces. And Monika begins the game with d4, uh, the queen's pawn opening. Hampi replies with knight f6, preventing the immediate e4 push here. So c4 grabbing space in the center, e6 by black activating the dark square bishop at the same time uh, preparing to go for d5 striking the center white chooses to go for knight f3 developing the knight at the same time grabbing the uh, the dark squares of the center and black strikes the center with d5 here white chooses to go for g3 so we are looking at the catalan opening on the board and the idea is to bring the bishop uh, to g2 so that after pawn captures this bishop is gonna dominate the long a8 h1 diagonal and it will be a very much powerful piece for white however after realizing that this bishop is gonna come on g2 and this bishop is not gonna be there to protect the c4 square also recaptured the c pawn uh, black decides to capture the pawn with d into c4 and uh, white goes for bishop g2 fianchetting the bishop on the g2 square as we have discussed earlier black decides to go for uh, bishop b4 check activating the bishop at the same time creating some room for the king to castle knight bd2 by white uh, preventing the check here uh, also developing and uh, in in catalan opening we many times see that uh, black again gives back the pawn in order to gain some gain some advantage uh, in activity uh, but however here humpy chooses to maintain the superiority in the number of pawns so she goes for b5 and if you think that uh, yeah white can go for knight e5 attacking the rook there is nothing for him to uh, nothing for black to do but obviously black has knight d5 and everything is set the bishop cannot attack the rook here however in the game we see that uh, white goes for a4 attacking the pawn but um, with the idea of damaging damaging the pawn structure but that's not a problem because black simply goes for c6 and now the problem is this white's control over this b4 square is a little bit weak and um, yeah obviously this pawn can advance but that can be stop stopped with uh, a5 and well uh, obviously this c pawn is a little bit weak or a, a drawback um, like a backward pawn for black and also as a compensation we can see that white is much ahead in development so uh, black needs to take care of that by developing pieces as soon as possible however white chooses to ensure king's safety with castle here and a5 preventing the pawn from move further and uh, looking at that 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 the that black is uh, you know coming from the queen side attacking the queen side uh, white chooses to strike the center with e4 but now here is a good chance for black to win another pawn in this position so you can feel free to pause the video and try to find the winning tactic for black. Yeah, it's, it's pretty simple, isn't it? Uh, after bishop into d2, bishop into d2, knight into e4, uh, black here wins another pawn. And that is the style of Ampi you, you know, like she's like uh, super calm and steady. And she 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 is not in hurry. She's always like, okay, I'm, I'm, I have nothing to do. Uh, I have nowhere to go. I, I, I'm just there. And I will win uh, material one after the other and go for your king. 
uh, that's the style however white chooses to go for a into b5 c into b5 now this p b pawn is uh, backward so and uh, white here goes for knight g5 attacking the knight so that uh, white can uh, attack this uh, rook here black here goes for some kind of counterplay with uh, knight into d2 uh, so black is saying that if you capture my rook i'm gonna capture your rook and there is i i have uh, uh, nothing to be uh, to be worried about however here uh, while i was watching the game i was thinking about why not knight into f7 there is uh, some some chance for white to be in advantage so after knight into f7 king into f7 queen into d2 this rook is under attack so rook a7 uh, rook f4 check queen f6 preventing the check here but now this uh, this uh, queen is attacking the the knight so after queen into b8 winning back the material uh, we can see that uh, this rook is under attack at the same time it looks good for uh, for white isn't it but then yeah while analyzing i saw that there is queen into d4 now this queen is uh, defending the uh, the rook at the same time this uh, queen side majority of pawns is very dangerous for white so that's not a good idea however uh, here white simply goes for queen into d2 and rook a7 as the rook was under attack white goes for d5 attacking the center but uh, black here simply ensures king's safety with castle short castle queen e3 now with the idea of uh, queen c5 attacking the uh, backward b pawn taking advantage of the uh, weak pawn over there and uh, here obviously rook is under attack so rook a6 simply uh, saving the attack and uh, rook fd1 with the idea of uh, bringing other rook also maybe after uh, rook d4 rook d1 uh, white will simply double up on the d5 rook d6 uh, going for uh, black is going for her own battery here and queen c5 uh, now this queen cannot capture this uh, knight because uh, simply black will lose this rook and also this uh, pawn uh, this uh, queen is now attacking the pawn but black simply goes for uh, knight a6 developing the knight uh, and at the same time attacking the queen now queen cannot capture this pawn otherwise black is now gonna capture uh, the the knight on the g5 square so white has nothing to do over the queen side so white simply comes back with with queen e3 and uh, black here uh, you know wins another pawn with e into d5 now black is up by three pawns and this queen side majority is just nasty for white and after this point we can see you will, uh, you will realize that white is gonna white is you know uh, getting out of moves and that we can see uh, that we'll see in uh, um, shortly however white goes for rook d4 with the idea of uh, queen d2 and rook d1 uh, you know tripling up tripling up the pieces taking full control of the d5 however uh, here black goes for uh, rook e8 activating the rook at the same time attacking the queen so queen d2 as we have discussed earlier and simply uh, knight b4 with the idea of if rook comes then knight is gonna come on uh, on the d3 square uh, putting an outpost over the center and uh, simply cutting off uh, the effect of the, these triple pieces uh, so white here goes for h4 uh, you know white has simply nothing to do what what she can do in this position However, uh, bishop f5 now. Now black is slowly bringing the pieces over the king side. Queen f4 attacking the bishop but simply rook f6 defending it. Queen goes back to d2 and then uh, bishop d3. Now the point is that if um, bishop comes on f1 and try to exchange the pieces then the knight is there to take uh, place of this bishop and black will always have this uh, you know annoying outpost. Uh, in his uh, in her area and uh, that will be very much annoying for for her however rook f4 with the idea of uh, exchanging the rooks but simply h6 attacking uh, the knight here knight goes back to h3 and rook e2 uh, attacking the queen now the point is that here queen should go to c3 to defend the attack but monica here goes for queen c1 and we can sense that a nasty fork is coming on the e1 square and for that here black simply goes for knight c2 uh, taking control of the e1 square and rook e1 is coming shortly 
White here chooses to exchange the rooks. So rook into f6, queen into f6. But now more pieces are coming into the game. Well, the idea is that bishop f1 cannot be an option because rook e1 now there is a skewer over this uh, first rank. So after queen moves, black is going to capture the rook. So it's almost impossible for white to defend any like all the threats by black and no counterplay from white's perspective however uh, rook into e5 at least uh, you know going for saving the skewer but here obviously black has a chance to win the the queen here and uh, that's not very much tough so i'm i'm going to i'm not going to tell you to pause the video so simply rook e1 check queen into e1 and knight into e1 now uh, white is down a queen and nothing much to do however bishop into d5 winning a pawn but simply uh, bishop f5 uh, you know uh, attacking the knight here knight f4 by white white will try to uh, keep the pieces on the board um, as long as possible and simply knight d3 now now black will try to attack the pieces as much as possible knight h5 act, uh, attacking the queen here but simply queen b6 uh, uh, now this queen is attacking the rook rook a8 check and king h7 saving the check here and king h1 uh, black simply uh, captures the pawn queen into f2 rook f8 um, you know uh, with the idea of a a pin over the f file at the same time attacking the pawn here but simply queen e1 check the only problem for black um, in order to checkmate is that this bishop is taking control of this long a8 h1 diagonal and now black's bishop black bishop cannot come on the on this diagonal to uh, finish off the game that that is the that is the you know uh, plus point for white but that's not gonna stay for too long however uh, king g2 by white and black here simply goes for queen e2 check and here if king h1 there is a mating pattern uh, so now you can pause the video and try to find the mating pattern for uh, for black here yeah so it begins with knight f2 check king g1 knight h3 check king h1 queen f1 check and after king h2 uh, queen g1 is checkmate so because of that reason in the game we see instead of king h1 white goes for uh, king g1 but black simply captures the knight with queen into h5 bishop into f7 now white moves the bishop from this long diagonal and diagonal and now it's simply uh, there is um, like black can simply uh, bring the bishop on the long diagonal and uh, she has the chance to finish off the game so here in this position again for the last time you can pause the video and try to find the uh, last couple of moves and try to uh, you know help uh, black uh, in winning the game so it begins with queen d1 check king g2 queen e2 check king g1 queen f2 check and after king h1 bishop e4 and it's checkmate so with this uh, a glorious victory for, from Hampi Koneru she's really this you know uh, amazing calm and composed player she is not in her even even if uh, after you know uh, being up by three pawns she is not in hurry she is always like okay I'm gonna bring all the pieces one after the other and go for your king and in this position we can see she has successfully uh, went for white king so with this we are coming to the end of the game at the same time end of the video however here in this position i am taking your leave see you next time